Thank you for joining XR Room, which is India's first AR VR focus podcast. And today, I'm delighted to have with me Mr. Thomas Juan Lawrence, who is an entrepreneur, business developer, managing director, and a consultant. And he is the founder of Journey, which is a metaverse company. And he is also named as one of the top hundred digital visionaries and movers by TW Magazine. So, Thomas, it's a pleasure and honor to have you on the show. So, why don't we start with a brief introduction? Your uh, journey as an entrepreneur. <coughs> Oh, that journey is quite long, to be honest. I'm now 40 years old, almost 40 years. And I think the first thing I did was when I was 10 years old and I started a, to publish a family magazine for my family. <laughs> so uh, that was the first entrepreneurial thing I did in my life. Um, I have been spending a lot of my professional life um, running physical events and building up trade show organizations up to a global scale mainly in the lifestyle industry and one of the last things i did was founding a digital b2b platform for the fashion industry it was called v.com and i founded it in 2017 and it got acquired quite quickly in 2019 by new york based draw.com after i had scaled it to basically the biggest b2b platform in terms of brands being presented um uh, globally with more than 2500 fashion brands including prada and fila and all the big names uh, that were presented on that platform and then it got acquired in 2019 and then i joined forces with my very old and dear friend christian mio leclerc who is one of the most amazing creative technologists you can imagine He's and we joined forces and that was a couple of weeks before actually corona hit we started then looking into virtual experiences accessible to anyone through their browser and their smartphone in a quality that was not possible up until then. That's what we wanted to look into. And we started bringing some great people together uh, early 2020, mid of 2020, and have been on the journey to build journey ever since and as of today are can proudly claim to be the leading technology when it's about bringing high quality interactive experiences directly to the browser you've been doing physical events trade events for the lifestyle and fashion industry and then you've pivoted technology because i think you know technology and i think covid covid has been an accelerator uh, of technology and it, it's changed the way we used to view things it has forced us to adopt and adapt technology and it it has helped us to understand the potential of technology earlier like i i've been doing physical event i mean i'm it's i mean i've just done one physical event i mean which is immersion <laughs> but that's what i i thought that i would do and suddenly covid happened and then i realized like oh wow the entire world has changed i mean the physical event the model itself it is on a declining path but that doesn't mean that the industry has died what that means is that it there's an evolution of the industry that means that the virtual itself has given us the opportunity to touch lives and let businesses interact and created businesses in ways that is earlier what was was almost unfathomable so i'm i'm really excited about the the technology and where the future is going so your company journey happens to be a metaverse company so for my audience who don't really know what a metaverse is let's start with there let's talk define and explain and simplify metaverse for my audience facebook has just announced that they want to heavily uh, focus on becoming a metaverse company over the course of the next five years right so that's why everybody's now wondering wow, hold on a second what is actually the metaverse that those guys believe in um, why is a big company like facebook or epic games why are they putting billions <laughs> into a metaverse future because it's the future of the internet it is the next iteration of how we are communicating and perceiving content and information. It's about blurring the lines between the physical world and 
the digital world, mainly by creating immersive 3D experiences that can be interactively experienced together, experience live content from the real world in the digital space and vice versa, and the lines between the screen, mainly 2D right now, and the physical world will blur even more. And it holds a multitude of potential in basically every use case in every industry. For the longest time, we have been restricted to our 2D interface. I mean, you know, right from a newspaper, which was passive, to to our theaters, to a television screen, to uh, our, our mobiles, computers. If, 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 though though it's now moved to interactive, but it's it's all been stuck to a 2D interface. Now we are going to break out from that 2D interface and get into the 3D world and interact exactly like how we physical beings interact with, with the 3D world because we are 3D beings. We live in a 3D world and we interact with the 3D world. But our interface has restricted us to the, uh, you know, like a 2D interface. So yes, I, I think it's, it's going to be an exciting convergence. So it's, it's not just like a 2D, 3D thing, but I think there's going to be so many different layers which is going to be converging. There's going to be blockchain, there's going to be NFT, there's going to be artificial intelligence, 5G and so on and so forth. So would you like to talk a little bit about the infrastructure and then maybe go on and explain how do you think it will benefit individuals and businesses? Yes, let me start off with talking about how it will benefit individuals. The internet as we know it, with Google search 2D and all those websites, is the most accelerated information machine humankind has ever seen as of today. But human communication, only 20% of human communication is about transporting the hard information. 80% of human communication is about emotions and experiences and memories and how it feels, how it looks, how it tastes, distance, social interaction, those kind of components. And imagine this, over the last two decades when the internet really became successful, it only actually addressed 20% of the human communication part, the information. Now what we are unlocking is the other 80% what makes us humans human. And I feel that holds the massive potential for individuals. We're going to enter an age of a more human internet where it's more about actually meeting each other or interacting with each other, having fun together and triggering emotions that you have not, that you forgot about when you've been scrolling through Amazon. <laughs> efficiently looking for a, uh, a, a, I don't know, an MP3 player or whatever. So I believe that's the most, the biggest benefit for individuals. We will be having better digital experiences, more human digital experiences. Now, what does that mean for organizations, enterprises? And I just want to give you three examples, just three out of probably 300 that we've been faced with as a young company. And one is music industry, making a concert accessible interactively, like you have not seen it before on your computer or your notebook, um, is a use case we did very successfully with the big global band Coldplay, for example, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and you could basically join the concert as an avatar, dancing with others, flying around the band in an exclusive, immersive concert experience. And the internet freaked out because they loved it so much. Okay, so that was music industry first example. Now, this next step is that we are talking with big labels, artists about why not making their next music video interactively experienceable. Why can you not? instead of just passively viewing the music video, be in that music video with the artist and your friends. And hold on a second. If you do this, why not create an entire 3D album experience once a new album of the artist comes out? And if that's the case, why not actually create a 3D Spotify? 
where you can experience artists in a completely new way. Those are all cases that we are currently discussing with the music industry. And some of them we have already executed in the studio. Let me give you a second one. It's about um, business conferences. So we have built immersive enterprise worlds for big enterprises where the em global employees of the enterprises could get together in a beautiful nature environment at the beach with a bar and finally hang out together at the bar again, uh, even though all were locked down uh, at lockdown. And they were able to have chats together at the fireplace and start fireworks in the sky. And you know what they did? They got to try to get together as the avatars on the beach and took selfies. Um, now, because they've all been together and they shared it internally and still laugh about it. That's the second use case. And the third one is e-commerce. What I initially said, keep in mind that Amazon is extremely efficient when it gets to looking for a specific product and the price. That's the transactional part of the buying experience in the internet has been solved and optimized for 10 decades and billions of dollars. Uh, there's hardly anything to optimize here. But what's missing is the part beforehand, the buying experience, the reason why there are big flagship stores by big brands on high street that are fun and that excite you and that get you interested in the brand. Those kind of experiences are not solved in the internet yet. And we are in a lot of interesting discussions with a lot of big brands that want to create brand experiences that are pre-transactional in the e-commerce space. Those are just three examples. There's a lot more. That education, there's universities, there's uh, museums, there's culture and art, there's sports, there's entertainment, the list goes on. We've seen all those cases. We have too little time to talk through all of them, but uh, I hope I could give a bit of a glimpse into the opportunities and chances behind the metaverse. You said something extremely profound while, while we were mentioning about the interface drawback it, it's done so much, the Googles and the Amazon, you know, I mean, today we cannot do without it, but it 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 provides us the experience, which is just 20 percent. And you said the 80 percent is what Metaverse is going to open up. And, and I, I think that is something which uh, all my listeners should kind of seize because that's where the opportunity lies, you know. And if we tap into those I think we'll be creating businesses which the world hasn't seen. You said something which is something really, really profound, which is like the 3D version of Spotify. How cool would that be? The the concerts, you know, so far, which we have been limited by either maybe you're watching it on the 2D interface or watching it going physically live, which is at this point in time so such a no-no because of the, of the world that we are living in. But with the metaverse, it can open up amazing possibilities where you interact with them. You are on the stage. You are part of the story. There, there's so many things which is happening. And, and like you mentioned, you, you there are so many opportunities. And if we kind of look into each of those, these are huge values over there. All that is needed is a desire and intent to understand what Metaverse is and go create a business which could be a billion dollar business. You mentioned that you have done something about uh, you, uh, something with Coldplay. W would you like to talk about that? Yes, um, uh, it was a very exciting case because it was a very loud case with a lot of global attention. The biggest metaverse case directly in the internet, in the browser. It was not in Fortnite, it was not on a gaming computer, it was it was just accessible to everybody who had a smartphone or a computer at, at home. And all of those people were able to access for the first time a metaverse experience. And it was stunning. It was an exclusive concert with that global band. We had a beautiful storytelling uh, with little fox that was the oscar winner christoph Waltz, who spoke to you and introduced you to the experience and then you could collaboratively listen to the band playing the exclusive concert 
and we saw so many people dancing together, waving at each other. Also saw the most positive social media reactions you can imagine, which proved again the power of that technology and that it seems to really move humans at their core. Because there were so many people sharing on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok, on LinkedIn about their experience they had. And let me quote some of those comments of people that joined. Um, one person said, this is the best concert of 2021. And I think the person was right because there was hardly any real concert and the virtual ones were not as good as this one. Um, there were people that said, you know what, I felt so sad the last couple of weeks, but that experience made me finally laugh again. There were people saying, I want to move to that place. I want to leave the physical world and stay there. There were people <laughs> uh, saying that this is the most amazing experience they had ever uh, in the internet. And all those emotions that got triggered by showing the world metaverse experience for the first time um, were are beautiful for me, obviously, to watch and um, obviously also improve how uh, what potential lies in this, because it's not just about the Coldplay concert. You can basically apply that pattern to any case. It will always be way better than just looking at a YouTube video, watching a YouTube video. You know, it, it will be way more immersive, way more social, way more fun um, than anything else. So that's what we've seen with Coldplay. Um, it's been a massive collaboration with big players. We have BMW, uh, who were the, the, the hosts of that entire thing. We had Coldplay exclusively recording for that experience. We had the most amazing 3D artists in the world. And we had our new technology that provide those experiences to the internet. And I think that constellation is, was quite one of a kind was a really unique experience and I think it was one of the milestone experiences for the internet in 2021. You mentioned Facebook. Facebook wants to move from being a social media company to a metaverse company. There are more and more people who are socializing within gaming worlds rather than these, you know, I mean, physically or in the social media. So there's obviously there's this huge change that we are seeing where the world is going, how we will socialize, how, what role will metaverse play is something that we are just kind of scratching the surface. We're just kind of figuring out. Now you mentioned that what you build is like a browser based, mobile based. Eventually with glasses coming in like these, the virtual reality headset, augmented reality headsets, and maybe going forward lenses or brain computer interfaces and things like that, the world is going to be completely transformational. We are just like I said, scratching the surface, you know, maybe in 10 or 15 years when we have the entire metaverse laid down as such, I, I'm sure it will be a constantly, uh, a world which will be constantly iterating while we are constantly improvising and building things, you know, because it's a digital world, you know. There are so many pros, but there are also cons. Cons, as, as I, what I mean by that is, is the internet when it was built, it was supposed to be a decentralized platform. But right now, it's it's become a walled garden of, of sorts. There's payment gateways everywhere and things like that. Do you see Metaverse, this spatial computing, Web 2.0, whatever that we're building at this point in time, will it follow the same path or will it be decentralized and open for all? Many people are now trying to enter the space somehow. But what we always see, saw in every technology, in every innovation cycle was that there was a consolidation afterwards. So that's why in the early days of the internet, as we know it, it was decentralized, but then the market dynamics led to a not monopole, but oligopole structure of big players that define the standards of how certain things are done. And I feel the same pattern will also happen to the metaverse. Midterm future, let's say 10 years, there will be a couple of players that have defined certain standards. There will not be one, 
the future OS that's running on the lens that we will be wearing in our eyes in 15 years time, right? So someone will write standards for and define standards for those, those interfaces that we will be surrounded by. Um, and I think it's just the normal dynamics of every innovation cycle. So I expect this to happen as well. And I also see this the reason, one of the reasons why Facebook is now entering that space because they want to be part of defining that future that's going to be there in 10 years time. Um, it will obviously be not, not be like the internet as we know it will be shut down tomorrow and now we're all in the metaverse. There's not going to be that day. <laughs> it will slowly fade out more and more and more and more of the new things will come in an e even bigger market then. So that's what's going to happen. But uh, what I'm also faced with a lot is the question of, is there going to be the one metaverse? And I don't believe that's going to be the case. So on the infrastructural side, no, but especially not on a metaverse. Uh, 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 there's not going to be one metaverse. There will be many different ways to get together in certain kinds of experiences or whatever social interactions or whatever interactions that are required, just like there are millions of websites out there. <laughs> there will be millions of metaverse cases out there. Would you like to talk about your company, Journey and Walls uh, Pioneer? And well, because of COVID, we we living in a world which is more accessible, more collaborative. So what are your views on India as a market opportunity? And are you looking at uh, partnering with India in startups? Yes, so Wars Binaire is a creative hub for cutting edge technologies. And what we're, it's the mother company basically of my partner Christian Mulocler and myself. We are working with a lot of artists and creatives and technologists outside of the standard norms. And that means sometimes we come up with something like the first AI-based 3D sculpture we have it physically being produced. Is that a business model? No, it's, but it's the result of those creatives sitting together and exchanging ideas and playing around with technology. This is the foundation and the ecosystem in which new things and true innovation can grow from. Because only in those kind of setups, people are really rethinking, like completely rethinking what can be done. They're not creating the next. So that we don't have coders in-house that want to create the next e-commerce shop or the next app. We have people that are looking at research papers that are coming out straight from universities and try to play around with that stuff and map it with technology that's already out there and thereby create something completely new. That's the approach of what's been near the mother company. And sometimes we're lucky and identify something that really seems to have a lot of potential and journey is one example of this. So when COVID hit, that's what we figured out. Journey, we, we, we realized that now that everybody was sitting at home and right now in front of the 2D screens, right? That they have at home with their computers and their smartphones, the internet experience actually is not as good as it should be in 2021. Um, and we wanted to make a way better internet experience accessible to anybody directly. Basically bringing that VR experience that some people cannot afford to anybody as of today. Obviously, it's still more immersive if you put on glasses, but if you don't have the glasses, or if you're, if you're, I don't know, if you have a day, you don't take on the glasses, you just click on the website, right? And let's make those low hanging digital experiences way better than they used to be. That's the mission of Journey. And um, because we had, we're so lucky to have all those creative technologists with us that are creating amazing things, we were able to pull as of today, of the, the leading technology to provide those experiences in the internet. And um, as I told you before, we are in a lot of discussions with enterprises and industries about the potential now to do something in that 
low-hanging fruit version of the metaverse. And obviously, we're in the digital age. We are not tied to geographics. We are a global company. We have employees working from everywhere around the globe, from South Africa to Berlin, where I am based, to Switzerland and, and the US. So our employees are decentralized and also our partners that we speak with and the projects we do are global, meaning we are absolutely open also to speak to Indian enterprises, Indian agencies that want to do something that is cutting edge in the internet. Um, for their case, we are more than happy to, to um, elaborate those, those opportunities together. We've set a global standard with some of the most prestigious brands out there, with, for example, with Adidas or with BMW and with big names. And we are, and we are working with the biggest tech players out there like Epic Games. That global standard can be applied to any enterprise and use case that takes it serious no matter where they're based. Thomas, thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. Really appreciate you taking time being part of the show. My last question to you, what's the future road map of, uh, map of Journey and Wall Spiner? And if you had to paint a picture of the future, what the world would look like in the next 10 years, what would you have to say? So for us as an enterprise, uh, we want to be part of defining that future internet experience. I want to I want to speak to Mark Zuckerberg soon about his metaverse approach and tell him that we, maybe we have the better one. <laughs> um, and the, the world will have changed in 10 years time. Um, and the bottleneck will no longer be the technology, but the humans and the organizations and the political, um, let's say, uh, the politically political games inside of institutions and organizations that hold back on innovation. It's the technology will allow for basically everything anyone can imagine that will be the case. The question is, are all organizations in 10 years time already able and ready to adopt to it? Or will they hold back? Will there be restrictions internally and stuff like this? This will hold us back, but technology will really allow for anything that any one of us can imagine as of today i guess there will be no limits maybe in 10 years time maybe we can have this conversation possibly talk uh, reflect on what he said and i also <laughs> endorse your thoughts because i think we are getting into a world of abundance so far you rightfully pointed out you know technology is growing exponentially but humans aren't they're still on a linear path and there are so many traditional legacy businesses, political parties, humans and legacy organizations who are holding on to their past and their opaque functioning. We need to, you know, take off our blinders and welcome the, the new, the new which blockchain brings, the decentralized world, artificial intelligence, which enables you and everyone, autonomous vehicles, uh, clean energy and so on and so forth and metaverse. It, it, we, are in, we are in exciting space. The only thing that we as humans need to do is reflect on the wrongs that we've been doing for the ages and correct those because for the first time in human history, we've got the opportunity to leverage technology and correct our wrongs. And I hope that we correct those wrongs and build a be beautiful world. You know? So thank you, Thomas. Really appreciate you being part of the podcast. And to my listeners, if you like what you see in here, then please press the subscribe button. And until next time, see you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Really appreciate this. Thank you, Eddie.